Thank you for visiting our page. My name is Gary Stroud, sales manager here at Avalon Test Equipment. Before your video begins, I just want to give you a brief summary of the services that we offer. We guarantee 24-hour calibration on PIM, sweep, and fiber gear. Once it's in the door, it's out the door the next day. We provide certified training so your crews are properly educated. And we pride ourselves on last minute rentals and sales so you can test with confidence. And above all, customer service is our top priority. If there's any test equipment requirements that we can help be of service to, please contact us at sales at avalontest.com. Enjoy your video. This is the Anritsu MW82119 Bravo, the newest generation of PIM Masters from Anritsu. This is the LTE 700 model, uh, incredibly popular for first net testing. Uh, today we're going to go over uh, the basic functionality of the unit, how to use it, and some of the issues you may run into. When using the Enritsu units, you have to calibrate every time you go out into the field or every 12 hours. Uh, so go, let's go ahead and connect it up. To perform the calibration, you need the PIM standard and the PIM load. Um, here we're going to do it directly connected to the unit to verify that the unit is working correctly. So you press Shift Cal and you can start your calibration up. On the screen it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Press Start or Enter and you're going to go through this first process. Avalon carries in Ritsu PIM hunting and testing accessory kits. These include your phase cable, your torque wrench to 18 foot-pounds, your crescent wrench, your PIM load, your full set of accessories including your PIM standard, and all of the cleaning materials you would need for every site. So one way to verify the operation of the unit is to uh, finish your calibration, then connect the load back onto it. You can go ahead, switch to PIM versus time, start a test, and as it sweeps across, you can actually tap the load. And if you tap the load back and forth, you can verify that there's no internal breaks all the way down to the RF module inside of the unit. Um, when it, there's a break, you'll notice it's a huge jump in the unit, and this verifies the noise floor and all of your residual PIM. As you can see, we're down around negative 130 dBm at this point. So the next thing you can do to verify the rest of your gear is to connect the load directly to the end of your phase cable. Go ahead and start the test again under PIM versus time. And you can shake the cable around and see if there's any drops or dips or breaks in the ends is where that normally happens. You can shake this guy around and see that you basically have a good functioning unit. One of the biggest issues uh, contractors have is their cables causing PIM. Um, these cables, again, all need to be cleaned thoroughly, but sometimes we see different things that occur. Um, if you get nicks or scratches in the end face, um, those can cause PIM. But then also you see this is a brand new cable that has this rubber ring. The rubber inherently doesn't cause PIM, but if any types of little pieces of metal get behind there, they're not coming out and they're going to cause more PIM. So we actually like to remove those from all of our new cables before we send them out. I recommend you do the same. When testing for PIM, uh, cleanliness of your connectors is incredibly important. Uh, you want to clean the connector saver before each test. You want to make sure that your PIM standard is fully cleaned out. And you want to do this before each connection. Uh, clean up the load and then when you're calibrating with the cable on there as well, you want to make sure that everything is fully cleaned out. So this is the aftermath of a rental. As you can see, there's metal flakes and shavings all around here. If any of that is actually inside the connector, 
it will cause PIM. So I'm using alcohol and swabs to clean out the internals of the connector to make sure all of that is out of the way. These are the Enritsu MW82119 Bravos. Uh, this is the LTE700 model used for first net PIM hunting. We provide external PIM hunting training for this. And over here we have the LTE600 model, which also has the uh, return band of 1900. Um, this is going to be used for the future T-Mobile and Sprint PIM hunting. Thanks for checking out our video on the Ann Ritsu MW82119 Bravo. Please contact our sales team if you have any other questions or if you'd like to rent or purchase one of these units. We also offer 24-hour turnaround calibrations on these. And remember, with Avalon, you can always test with confidence.